one of the things that I really, really want to emphasize to yourselves is, first of all, chess is hard, but also chess is fun. You can have a lot of fun with chess. As you see in this, in this final position where you guys checkmated me, uh, you, you created a pretty cool looking checkmate, right? That's pretty cool. I mean, just the bishop. And if we were to move the pawn, for example, over here, we're just going to move the king to the side for a second. That's down, Nate. But if we move the bishop to a dark square, it would be checkmate in two. I would move my bishop here. You, let's say you would go check. I'd move my bishop. You checkmate me. That's, a, that's nice. Now, if you saw this in advance, you would want to do something we call a composition. How many of you have heard about chess compositions? Yeah? They're also called chess studies. And there's some really, really cool chess studies. Now, I'm about to show you a chess study that is really hard, but it's really fun. But we have triple pawns, double pawns. Look at all of these things happening. Now, all of these pawns are ready to queen, right? They're just ready to queen. <laughs> <laughs> now, check this out, but it's White's turn, but look at all of the material that Black has. Black has a bishop, another bishop, a knight, a rook, a rook, but how many of us realize that if it was Black to play, he would take our knight and it would be check and mate, right? Check and mate, it's clear. So, white has to stop the checkmate, but he's got so many pawns ready to queen, maybe he can overcome his material deficit. So look at this position for a moment. Well, this game, this uh, study, I mean to say, is called night promotion. Night promotion. And try to keep a running count of how many times white promotes to a knight. Okay, in the first case, uh, what would the class like to play? Again, black is threatening to capture your knight with check and mate. If you advance your pawn and make a queen, just a second, if you advance your pawn and make a queen, that would be a terrible move because after he takes the queen and after you make another queen by capturing the rook, white is helpless. White is helpless to bishop takes checkmate. So how can white stop checkmate? Yes, young man. And, what, yes, exactly. You would play pawn on d7, you promote it, but not to a queen. Correct. So, you promoted a pawn to a knight once, correct? Okay, now I'll play black. I'm going to capture your knight with my rook. Yes, young man. Yes. And make it a knight. Knight, get a knight. <laughs> so that's the second time. That's the second time you promoted a pawn to a knight. Okay. Let's say I play <laughs> rook captures your knight. Yes, young lady. Correct. Whoops, where's the knight? There it is. So, now you've defended 
this knight, so I cannot checkmate you. But let's say I play knight here. Ooh. Yes, young gentleman. Okay, let's imagine that white takes this knight. And then after I capture your knight, how on earth are you going to defend checkmate? <gasps> so you cannot take my knight. Yes, young man. Yes, you. Correct, correct. That's the right move. Now I'm going to capture your knight. Yes, young man. You capture and promote to a queen? To a knight. So how many times was that? How many times did you promote? Three times. OK, we're not giving up. Let's say I'm black and I play king here. Now what would you like to play? Yes, young man. That would be a good move except for one small detail. My bishop's protected. Small detail. What should white play? You can't move with your king. Yes, young lady. Correct. E6. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play bishop takes b6. What do you get? Yes, young man, what would you do with white? <coughs> Correct. Now, I'm going to take your knight. <laughs> Yes, young man. Um, eat the bishop and promote to knight. And how many times is that promotion now? Four. <laughs> oh, four or five. I think that was five. OK. That was five. Five times he promoted to a knight. That's crazy. OK, I'm now how many think, let me pause for a moment. How many think that the position white's winning? How many positions, how many people think black's winning? Okay, how many pe people think it's a draw? Still nobody thinks it's a draw. Okay, so I'm going to play king here. What are you going to do? What will you do? Yes, young man. Correct, because you don't really have any other moves. You can't move your king. If you move your knight, I'm going to take it, so. Push the pawn. Now, I'm going to wait. Your turn. What would you do? You move your knight. But where can you move your knight? If you move it to any other square than c6, I'm going to take your knight and checkmate. And yes, young man, what would you do? Correct. OK. I'm going to take your knight. And what are you going to do? <laughs> That's six times. Six times you promoted your knight. Now, I'm going to move my bishop back. Yes, young man in the red. Yes. B7, correct. Now when I take the knight, what's the resulting situation? Stalemate. Stalemate. White can't move. So it's a draw. Nobody had it right. You all thought either white was going to win or black was going to win. I just thought that that was a really, really fun problem. <laughs> And I wanted to share. How many of you ever seen any game where you promoted six times to a night? <laughs>
this magazine, I live in Amsterdam, Holland, and this magazine is uh, called uh, Schachnack Chess Play, and it's all in Dutch, and I, I read Dutch very, very poorly, but they have all kinds of interesting articles, and I saw that one and I just thought it was so funny. I was reading it last night and I said, I've got to share that with my class. So it was a uh, night, night play, night promotion. How many of you recognize the, pla the, the player on the cover? Who is that? Do you know who this gentleman is? He's the world's number one player. Oh. Fisher? <laughs> I know, he's not Bobby Fisher. This young man, he is from Oslo a city in Norway, the capital of Norway. His name is Magnus, Magnus, Magnus Carlsen. And he is the world's number one player. I think he's about 22 or 23 years old, something like that. And he's the world's number one player and he's going to be the challenger in November for the world championship. And the world champion today is a, is a gentleman from India. His name is Viswanathan Anand. And he and Magnus are going to play a match in November for the World Chess Championship, and they're going to play for two and a half million dollars. I'm not kidding. Two and a half million bucks. Yeah, awesome, right? Awesome. How many of you have played a game and it doesn't get finished? Like, you know, we'll play later, right? Like, you got to go eat your dinner. Okay, so it's basically you all have experienced the same thing that I've experienced. Now, in the old days, and I'm only talking about 30 years ago, way before you guys were born. In the old days, we, they used to do a thing called a German. You play a game for five hours. Five hours. And if you hadn't finished the game, it was stopped, and it was called adjourned. So what would happen, you guys know your score sheets, right? This, is, this was the procedure. They would give the two players an envelope, and you record the position on the front of the envelope in what is called a diagram position, right? And then they take the two score sheets, and they put them in the envelope. They seal the envelope. And that envelope would go into a vault where it would stay until the game was resumed. So you couldn't go in and change the score sheet or change the position. And then the game would start from that adjourned position. So I have the black pieces, okay? I'm black and my opponent is a very, very strong international master from the United States. We're playing for first place in the Montreal Open in Quebec, Canada. And we got into a time scramble. Do you guys know what a time scramble is with the chess clock when you've got less time and you have to hurry your moves? Do you know it? Yeah. You also, you know what, you, when you're down on time, you gotta move real fast. Well, that's what happened to us. And suddenly, and without warning, the arbiter comes and says, time to adjourn. Whew. So we stop right here. And my opponent, Norman Weinstein, was on turn. And he, he was white. And he sealed his move. Okay. So. I went and I had a dinner, and then after the dinner, because we were going to play the next day, we were going to resume about 9 o'clock in the morning. So we had plenty of time to study what is called an adjourned position. So let's see one feature of this position was that I have one, two, three, four pawns. And he, my opponent, only has one. So I'm way ahead in force, so I have the much better position, correct? Yeah. Right. And it's pretty clear what Norman was going to do. 
he sealed this move. In other words, he wrote on his score sheet, bishop on d6 captures b4. And I knew he was going to do that. Now, I'm studying the position, right? It's after dinner, and I'm looking, 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 looking at the position, and what do you think I should do? Yes, young man. If I move my pawn on a6 up, he's going to capture my pawn. What do you think I should do, young man? The pawn on b6. Correct. I wanted to capture this pawn on b3. OK. So let's stop and think about this for a second. OK. If I capture this pawn on b3, eventually, one day, let, oh, I think I've got Oh, yes. Oh. Uh, yes, I, I blew it. <laughs> I blew it. There's a pawn on a5. Sorry. Sorry. So white has a pawn here, here. So I could capture this pawn on b3, right? Right. OK. So let's think about this now. I figure I'm black. I figure I'm going to push push, 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 and one day I'm going to force white to give up this bishop for both of my pawns. Okay? Now this is what I'm thinking ahead. I'm planning that these two pawns are so good they're going to cost white his bishop. And then what's going to be left? There's I'm going to take this pawn, and white's going to have one pawn, but I'll be a bishop ahead. I think I'm winning. But I have a pawn on a6, which is going to promote to a queen, correct? Correct. But what square can this pawn promote to? And that's a dark square, correct? And I have a light square bishop. Oh, I won't be able to win. I won't be able to win because it'll be like that situation I, sh I showed in the first lecture. I'll have the wrong color bishop. Even though I'll be a bishop and a pawn ahead, it's not enough to win. And I realized, well, in that case, the position's a draw. Despite the fact that I'm ahead in material, that I have a higher force, the position's a draw. And so I was disappointed because earlier in the game I was winning. Shh. Earlier in the game I was winning and I was so disappointed. So I took a long bath. I took a long bath. And how many of you play blindfold? How many of you can see the chess position in your mind? Can you see a chess position in your mind? Well, I had the adjourned chess position in my mind, and I began to think and think and think. And I had what is called a eureka moment. I know how to win the game. I don't take the pawn. I played uh, f4. My opponent played bishop takes b4. My, I played f4. Just a second. And now, look what I did. I played h4. Norman played bishop to d2. I played h3. Norman played king g1. I played king g3. Now I'm threatening to play h2 check and bishop e4 checkmate. Bishop e1 check. Okay. I played king f3. King f3. My opponent waited with bishop d2. And I didn't take the pawn. I played bishop f5. Now let's see what my opponent did. 
He played B4. Advancing the pawn, I played bishop to c8. So this was all the analysis that I saw in the bathtub. King h2, king e4. So now I want to advance this pawn. Notice that my bishop on c8 protects the pawn on h3. Bishop c1, and I played bishop to d7. I'm waiting. King came back to g1. I played f3. Bishop came to g5. I played king to d3. The bishop came to f4, I played king e2. Now, <coughs> pardon me, now what am I threatening? My f pawn is threatening to go, right? Okay, I'm threatening to go f2 check and make a queen. So my opponent had to play bishop g3. Okay, so now what did I do with black? Yes, young lady. Correct. I push the h pawn with check. Now he can't take with the bishop because I will go f2 and f1, so he had to take with the king. And then what did I do? Correct. I heard it, but who said it? What should I do? Push the pawn. Now, my opponent has no choice, right? If he doesn't capture the pawn, I'm going to make a queen and checkmate him. So he took my pawn, and what did I do? I did, I did indeed. And now, let's stop right here and think about the situation. Let's stop right here and think about the situation. My opponent played king h1, and now, do you think I should run with my king over here and take all of these pawns? No. Young man, what do you... Check him. Check him. Six. Six, okay. And then after king here, what should I do? Young man in the red, did you have an idea? No? Okay. What do you think I should do? Yes, young man. Yeah. Now I think you should take the pawn because you cannot get it. Well, if... Okay. How many of you have heard the word shadow? Shadow. And you know what a shadow is, right? You're in the sun and your shadow keeps following you. So we have the term shadow in chess. What it means is when the king moves over here to take all of these pawns, white's king will shadow blacks. Notice that white's king just follows black's king all the way over, but as soon as... <laughs> sorry. As soon as white's king gets into this corner, it's a fortress, right? As we showed in the first lecture earlier today. Once our king gets here, white can't lose. So we're going to go back, and we're not going to allow white's king to shadow. I'm not going to take the pawn. Isn't that crazy? Yes, young man in the red. Yes. Correct. That was the Eureka. I stalemate white. I play bishop to g2, and the white king can't move. He has to advance his pawn 
Remember the pawn that I didn't capture? White doesn't want to have this pawn in the position because what does he have to do? He has to advance it. So after b5, what did I do? Yes, young man. I, I did. I captured the pawn on B. Thank you very much. Now, white's in stalemate. What could he do? And what did I do? Yes, young man. I advanced my pawn to B4. He advanced his pawn to a7. What did I do? Advanced. I advanced. He made a queen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Take with, the bishop. Take with the bishop. And now my pawn is going to make a queen. I won the game and I won the tournament. Yay! <laughs> so that was, uh, in the old days, we had the, now if you play in a tournament here in the club, the rules are that the round starts at a certain time, <clears throat> and you're gonna, your time control and my time control means that we're going to play the game to a finish. But in the old days, sometimes we adjourned, and we could study the position, and my opponent, Norman, was very, very unlucky. If it wasn't for that eureka moment in the bathtub, I would have captured this pawn earlier and made a draw. So it was really lucky for me that the arbiters gave the envelope and said, seal your move. <laughs>